with the impact of suicides on families in the wake of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain's tragic deaths. Yeah, we've been sharing stories not only to shine a light on this country's mental health crisis, but we hope that we'll inspire those who need some help to reach out because help is available. And one of those stories came from our own Kate Snow. And Kate, it wasn't one that we knew. Yeah, yeah and not easy. It's, it's still fresh. It's been almost eight years now. We think about my father-in-law, John, often, but particularly this past week. And we do want to share our story, as so many others are right now, to help drive a national conversation that, frankly, is long overdue. Suicide Prevention Center crisis line. In places like the Didi Hirsch Center in Los Angeles, the phones have not stopped ringing. In the wake of Anthony Bourdain's death, calls to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline jumped 65% from Friday to Saturday, each call routed by area code to one of 150 local centers in the U.S., where crisis counselors connect people to potentially life-saving resources. New numbers from the CDC show suicide is now the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. The recent high-profile deaths of Bourdain and designer Kate Spade shining a light on a public health crisis. I feel like the two losses that occurred touched people in a very intense way. And having the CDC report launch right in the middle of that, I think was a way that has been engaging people both in their heart as well as in their head to, to really feel this and understand it. Talking about it isn't easy. I lost my father-in-law to suicide. Mm. We miss him every day. Mm. There's a hole in our hearts. After I choked up on today, so many people reached out with thanks, with compassion, even some who've considered suicide, saying our conversation made them think. Hi, everybody. John Bro, my father-in-law, was a wonderful person, a kind-hearted guidance counselor outside Chicago who loved the bears, helping people, and his grandkids. He'd fix just about anything. But his joyful exterior masked years of struggle. He'd experienced depression when he went through big transitions in life, and after retiring in his 60s, something was clearly off. We tried to get him help, but six days before Christmas, the phone rang and my husband screamed. We never thought this could happen. Our family thinks that maybe John thought that leaving would actually help, that he would spare us. Is that common? It's very common. Even if there isn't a rational reason to believe that, the mind can play tricks on a person. A simple thing we can all do, tell people we care. They're sounding like they're feeling overwhelmed, trapped, hopeless, despairing, or they're hinting around at those things like feeling like they're a burden. That would be a time to probe that a little further and do not hesitate to ask the question, does it ever get so bad that you think of ending your life? It's okay to ask that? It is. Mm -hmm. And research shows that that does not increase a person's risk. This may be their, their moment to be able to share something very serious that they've been having to carry on their own for some time. Kate, thank you again for sharing yeah. your story. I know it's not easy, but I, not. I think we're all hoping that mm -hmm. people are watching, that yeah. maybe this is a yeah. way for them to mm -hmm. connect. And if you are if you have a friend or someone you're worried about, like, how do you even start that conversation? Right, and there's no shame in talking about all of this, mm -hmm. right? So the conversation, it's interesting, you, you, Hoda, you were reacting like, really, you can ask, ask that? someone that, that You question. can if you're in a private, comfortable space. I mean, yeah. don't do it you know, in the hallway at work, but and set it up by saying, I, I care about you, I want to support you, and I'm not going to judge you. That's the advice from the experts. Lay that out there and, s and see if you can probe. And if you, as a, a friend or, or a coworker or a loved one, need help, you can call the lifeline too. And I want to put that number back up on the screen if, if we can. Mm -hmm. It's 1 800 273 TALK, 273 8255. There's also a text um, line that you can call. Mm -hmm. A crisis line where it's 741741. You can text any message to 741741 and someone will respond right away by text, which is sometimes an easier, less awkward way. Right. Well, maybe a first step, mm -hmm. too. You know, yeah. if it's yeah. like too, it seems too intimidating to pick up the phone, just anything, yeah. just to reach out. Anything. And it's so important, too, because um, the researchers are finding that a lot of people think about suicide wow. more than you would think. 18% of young people have a thought 
about ending their life, but most of them don't ever follow through with it. So if we can catch our friends and our loved ones in that Early, moment and yeah. get them help, it's even more important. Really powerful. Claude, your bravery okay. for yeah. sharing your personal story. Well, Thanks, my family Kate. supports me. Yeah with this platform, mm -hmm. talking about it and hoping that other people That's are. That's what we need to do more of, yeah. What could be more important? Okay, Thanks, thank Kate. you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.